What is up, y'all? The Eric V, your stream teach here. And this week's episode is brought to us by Elgato. They sent me their HD60X to review, and we're gonna see how it stacks up to the HD60S Plus, and if this thing is worth purchasing. Hint, hint, if you have a next-gen console. It might be, but let's discuss classes in session. The first thing you're likely to notice about the HD60X is that the ports are all on the same side. So they're all on the back except for the audio in port, which comes from your controller. So you want the easiest access to that. So that makes sense. I've played several different games so you can see what different genres of games perform like with the HD60X. Something that I notice is that the HDR converts to SDR when it's captured. The pass through, it's still in HDR, but you could capture HDR as well if you use the 4K capture utility. In my experience, the 4K capture utility made by Elgato did not work properly for me, so I had to record all of this footage through OBS. I wish I could have had some 4K footage or maybe some 120 FPS footage, but I was not able to capture that. And also I noticed that the sound was terrible. This is something that I won't blame on the HD60X specifically because I also had the same issues with my HD60S Plus. Even though the HDR does convert to SDR within OBS, if I was to use Dolby Vision, the colors would appear very washed out and for lack of a better term, ashy. So I had to resort to going into my Xbox's settings and then disabling Dolby Vision and Dolby Vision for gaming. So I was looking at the HD60X and HD60S Plus comparison chart here. Feel free to pause the video to take a better look at it. I noticed that it says 144 by 120 pass through. Comparison chart maybe could use a bit of an update or maybe this page could use a bit of an update, but it says frame rates higher than 60 FPS and refresh rates higher than 60 Hertz are not supported by Elgato Game Capture HD60S Plus. That should be an X. And one thing about the 1440p 120 Hertz refresh rate is that it took me an excruciatingly long time to get this working. So long, in fact, that I had to postpone this review to this week instead of last week because I couldn't get all the advertised features working. So what I ultimately had to do was change my input EDID from merge to display and then vice versa. So I had to play around with that. So that's how I got both to work. But before then, every time I would select 1440p from the list, it would change my refresh rate to 60 hertz, even though I should be able to do 120 hertz with 1440p. But if I used 4K, the most I could do is 60 which is how it should perform. And sometimes 1440p wouldn't even appear on the list. Something to note, could be a freak accident thing, but that's just what I went through. So with the 120 refresh rate, once I got it to work, it looked great on my television as the streamer, but this does not make any difference on what the audience sees. In fact, not much of what this card does if you have an HD60S Plus will affect the viewer's experience, except for the variable refresh rate. Now that PS5 has the variable refresh rate, that means both of the next gen consoles do. So we are able to limit screen tearing when it comes with the viewer's end and of course the streamer's end, which makes things look a whole lot better and a lot more crisp. One thing I noticed on the front of this box when I was preparing for this review was that it says play and create without compromise. That's a nice slogan. However, I still feel like you compromise just a little bit, which is the 4K 120 that the Xbox Series X and the PS5 are capable of outputting. If we get HDMI 2.1 into our capture cards, I can then give this slogan a ringing endorsement. So now after all that meandering, you're wondering, should I buy the HD60X or not? The answer is, it's complicated. If you have a PS5, an Xbox Series X or S, you don't have an HD60S Plus, I say go for it. If you don't have plans to buy an Xbox Series X or a PS5, maybe you can wait until the price drops a little bit. This is $200. This is $180 currently. 
The pricing is really close. I hear that this is supposed to be 150, but that is not the price I'm seeing online tonight. I say you might as well shell out the extra 20 bucks and go ahead and get the HD60X. Like I said, I've gone through some problems with it of my own, but again, this may just be issues on the software side. Maybe I'm just unlucky. I would not be honest if I did not bring those issues to you. Being able to play without compromising your frame rate is an amazing thing, but that's not as if there's no compromises at all because there's not 4K 120. There's not a lot of games that have 4K 120 simultaneously, but I can think of Halo Master Chief Collection off of the top of my head. Also, this capture card is much better for anybody who is recording footage to later put on YouTube or some social media site rather than streaming on Twitch because Twitch does max out at 1080p 60. Facebook, you can stream in 4K 30 all the live long day. But if you're on Twitch, this capture card might not do you as good as you might want. If you have an HD 60S Plus already, I would say just hang on to it. It's probably not worth the upgrade just yet. Maybe we'll get an HD 60X Plus that will allow us to at least have the pass through of 4K 120. If you wanna see the HD 60X in action, feel free to check out my streams every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Old School Saturday. And if you like the video, then like the video. Class dismissed. Big shout out to Corliss JC, Dr. J, and John for being tier three patrons. Yellow hearts everywhere. Zadie in the building. What up, Zadie? How's it going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The after image oh, effects are cool. Yeah.